I bow to all the seekers of truth. Definitely it is evident today that you have come here all the way in the rain to seek the truth that you are real seekers. And the real seekers will find the real way. Whatever they may do, whatever wrong paths they may to take, they may identify themselves with wrong things also and may oppose in the beginning the truth, but ultimately they will all find the real path as long as they do not try to deceive themselves. <clears throat> the awakening of the Kundalini is not a new thing as you people may be thinking. It has been done since 16th century back where it is said Indra, the God King, was given realization. So you can imagine that is called as Chidendra, means the Indra was made a hole here and there's a place where it was done in India. It's a very ancient thing and at the time of Rama also there was a fellow called Nachiketa who came to Rama's father-in-law Janaka and asked him if he could get his Self-Realization. And the father-in-law said that you can ask anything but not for your realization. He said, no, I don't want anything else but realization. And they say that he put him to test many a time for years and then he was the first who got realization at the time of Sri Ram. It is very interesting that how this system of Self-realization was kept more or less exclusive and rather secretive because the people would like always to use this method to make some money out of it. That they would not respect the reality and would learn, say, about few chakras, kundalini, this, that, few words and start selling books or posing that they are born again and impressing others with it and try to make some cults or some sort of groups just forming into some falsehood. And that is the reason this was kept quite a secret. But on the right hand side of the seeking, they tried to find out the ways and methods how to initiate the elements with us. The causal of elements was to initiate the causal of the elements by which we could control the elements for our own purpose. This was one way where they called it as the yajna and all that. And that's how the Vedas were written. Veda means vidha, means to know. These were written to say that you have to know. And at the very beginning of the Vedas it is written that after reading all this book throughout, if you have not known the truth, it is of no use to you. The very first stanza says so. So the whole thing was done with that idea. And in the ancient country of India, they started working on the right side to know the subtle body or the subtle deities of all the elements so that they could master the elements. This was first idea. On the left hand side, they started another kind of a search in believing that there is God and we have to ask the help of God. And they started praying first to primordial mother because in every religion there is a place for the mother. There is no religion which does not believe in the primordial mother. You can say that at the time of Muhammad Sahib he didn't talk much about it because the time was such but his own daughter was an incarnation of the primordial mother whose name was Fatima. 
and the two sons that were born to her are the sons who came on this earth also as Mahavira and Buddha. And they were born even earlier. Like that, they were born again and again as there's two elements as the disciples, as two disciples. And you can see if you read their life, their character, their behavior, you'll be surprised how these two characters have been born again and again in different times to suggest two personalities of two types who have been seeking God and who have been trying to understand God through their personality as disciples. And how they reached a conclusion after taking a kind of a uh, position in life. Now, for example, Buddha preached that there should be complete non-violence and also uh, Mahavira said so, there should be non-violence. But they carried it to such an extent that Mahavira's disciples started saving the bugs. They would get some bugs from the village, put them in a hut and put a Brahmin inside that. Fanaticism had reached that stage. And the bugs would eat or take, the, take out the blood of that uh, poor Brahmin and when they would be all filled with blood, then they would give money to this Brahmin. Such extreme vegetarianism or extreme type of ahimsa or another type of Buddha's ahimsa that started, that Buddha was not the one who was a vegetarian because he died. At the end you know that he ate the meat of a boar which was not properly cooked. So this kind of extreme type of food oriented religion started out of them, so they got themselves born again as Hassan and Hussein and righteousness. When it comes to the time, not a person who is a religious person. So the idea of all these people was in such a way that the time at that period was such and such and at that period this was the proper thing to be done. Now we can see the example of Christ is, Christ came at a time where the Son of God had to manifest and he came at a time where he had to forgive and he had to show to people how stupid they were to crucify so that they could repent for what stupidity they have done. And that's how he came on this earth. But when he will come again, he is not going to come in that way. The second advent of Christ is going to be a very serious one. When he will come, he will have eleven destroying powers. With that he will destroy all that is useless, all that has gone wasted, all those fanatics or whom they call Christ, Christ, I won't know, he's told that very well. All these things he's going to absolutely finish up. And those who are realized souls who have entered into the kingdom of God will be only saved. And this is what is described in all the scriptures. Of course, somebody calls them, say, Islam calls it Mehdi. In India, he's called as Kalaki. In the Bible, he's called as the Christ on the white horse. He's called by various names, but it is definite that he is going to come, and when he comes, then he is not going to bother as to tell you and convince you and to counsel you or to redeem you and give you realization. That time, he is not going to bother about it. He is going to come in pure destructive form where he will destroy all that is useless. And to understand this, if you see the Sistine Chapel of Michelangelo, you can see him clearly standing at the Agya Chakra with a robust body, throwing people up and down. Those who call Christ, Christ, he throws them down because they did not do anything what Christ has asked for. Now the people should know what we have got out of anything whatsoever. You may be identified with any cult, with any idea, with any group or anything, but always must know what you have got out of it. 
For example, I would say for Christians, it is necessary to know that Christ has said a very strong thing. Thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. Let us find out, do we have innocent eyes? If we don't, we are not Christians. How do we have innocent eyes? How do we develop our innocence is the problem. And to develop our innocence, we have to awaken the Kundalini. When the Kundalini is awakened, the first center of innocence is awakened. At that time, all the excretion work of the body just stops. And this center of Muladhara informs the Kundalini that there is somebody who knows the job and you can rise. Then only the Kundalini rises. This center of innocence is first awakened within us. If this center finds that the person is anti-God, he is anti-Christ, he is a man who is a devil or any sort of a thing, it just does not allow the Kundalini to rise. I have seen people with absolute frozen Kundalini. I have seen people who have nothing to do with Kundalini. We can say they are just like devils and they have no way that they can be realized. But 99% people in this world are excellent people, good people. And out of them, I think at least 30 to 40% people are seeking God. Not all. Some are seeking money, some are seeking power, and some are seeking some personal indulgences. But there are definitely true seekers on this earth, and these 30% people are, or 40% people, are the most important people from the God's point of view. You might be anything. You might be having any organization. You might be having any position in life. You might be any great personality. Makes no difference to God. What is important is that are you seeking? If you knock, the door will be open, has been promised. But if you think you have already achieved it and th that you are there, how can it be worked out? So one has to be humble about it and allow the Kundalini to rise in its own glory, giving you your real beauty. Now the thing we have to know that as the Kundalini ascends, we also start getting powers. The first power is that of innocence. Innocence has a power above all other powers. It's the most powerful thing. But in the human beings, it takes time for innocence to be awakened in the full way. It takes time. As a child, they have the innocence. And in childhood, if they get their awakening, that's the best thing that can happen to human beings, that in childhood only they become, get the realization. But as soon as you start growing, your attention starts going either to the left or to the right. You start indulging into all kinds of things as far as your sex is concerned, as far as your seeking is concerned, and you then jump on to some sort of a wrong thing which you should not have done. And that's how the first center gets lost. An innocent person is looked after by angels. Such a person has no fear of anything. He is not bothered. He is never violent. He is never hasty. He is never in a temper. He is so peaceful and he knows that what he is doing is the right thing. Such a person stands by righteousness. Like you can see in the life of Christ is a very good example that very Mari Magdalini was stoned by people. He stood up and he said, among you who has done no sin can throw the stone at her. Actually, Christ had nothing to do with a prostitute. He had no relationship of any kind with her. She is a prostitute and he is, a, he is the son of God. But at that time he did feel that she has a right to exist because those who are stoning her are the people who have committed also sins. Only she is a person who is exposed and he stood by her. And that is what happens to a person who is innocent, he is fearless. He has no fear of anything because he knows that he stands on truth and on innocence. Such a person also has a capacity to bear up lots of nonsense, to laugh at lots of tortures and troubles people bestow upon him. And the greatest thing of innocence is that it gives you discretion. 
Such a person is immensely discreet. He's so wise. He may be a little child. He may be a grown-up person. He may be a villager. He might be educated. He might be uneducated. But he's so wise that he sees what is right and what is righteous. And this is the greatest quality of an innocent person, that he's very discreet about everything. His discretion is just like a straightforward hit. He doesn't have to think, he doesn't have to bother. Whatever he decides is absolute discreet. And he doesn't have to have choices. He doesn't go on cho choosing people. He doesn't go on choosing things. He said, this is the thing, finished. So such a person becomes absolutely dynamic because he doesn't waste any energy, he doesn't waste his brains, he doesn't waste his arguments with anyone. If he thinks a person is worth arguing, he'll argue, otherwise he'll say, all right, you are clever, go ahead. This is the understanding of a person who is completely discreet. Like there was a very big joke about it, that uh, there was a man who was going up the road, uh, up the stairs, and another one was coming downstairs. The one who was going up the road was a wise man, and the one who was coming down was not a wise man. So he tried to be aggressive, so, and he told him that, I will not move for you because I don't move for fools. So the other one moved on one side and he said, I do meaning I move for out for fools, see, but he said, I do, and he moved out. So he has such a discretion how far to go and how far not to go. Now I will give an example how in nature you can find this very easily. See, the root has a little root cap. It's a very, very small, minute thing you have to see through the microscope. Now this root cap is a wise thing. It goes in the soil. It sees there are some stones, so it goes round the stones. Then it finds there are boulders, it goes round the boulders. It has to find its way, so it's not bothered. You are a boulder? All right, doesn't matter. I'm not going to fight with you. It passes through that, it goes directly to that place where it has to arrive. And when he reaches that place, when he arrives that place, what happens? He finds that he has tied up these boulders around himself to support the whole tree. This is the wisdom of a little bit, small little cell, which is the root end. So you can imagine how much there is wisdom in a little cell like that. And God has given us such a good brain, and if we do not have discretion, we are like people who are blind, who walk without knowing where they have to go. So the first power of your innocence is awakened. Innocent man cannot be harmed. Those who try to harm the innocent man are harmed ultimately. They are very severely harmed, and it is amazing sometimes that the harm can be too much, too severe, and that's why the compassion of Christ thought of it, and he said, Oh God, please forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Because it could have been that with the father who is so wrathful, they would have been all destroyed completely. So the way he said, forgive them. Because I do not want that these people who are ignorant people, who have tortured me like this, should be destroyed. This is the sign of innocence. Then the second chakra, when it is awakened within you, you have a special quality of creativity. Because when the second chakra is awakened, you are actually thoughtless. There's no thought in your mind. So you start looking at anything without thinking. You start looking at anything that is created without any ripple of thought in your mind. Like all that is created around the lake of your mind, is completely reflected in that rippleless lake. And you see the complete reflection of that creation as well as the joy that is bubbling in that creation. So your creativity becomes tremendous. You start seeing things but not thinking about it. 
Now see, if you come to this hall and you start seeing something, you like it, then you start thinking, oh God, this is a beautiful thing, but how much it must have cost and now how old it is, is it going to last or not, is it insured or not, all sorts of funny ideas will come to you and you'll never enjoy what it is. But supposing you have no thought about it, you just watch it, you just see it. What happens? The creation that of the artist who has created this beautiful thing, the joy of that creation that the artist had, who might be dead now, you start enjoying that joy. The whole thing can be filled in you with that bubbling joy that he wanted to put there with his own heart. And that's what happens because there is no thought. So the creativity becomes tremendous. But it's not only that the creativity is tremendous, but your techniques improve. For example, a musician can become a tremendous musician. People who have never done any work can become extremely powerful. We have somebody here from India. The other day he was telling people because he gave one of the lectures that I had never seen what his wood is. I did not know what was teak, what was other wood and all that. And he had no job when he came to me and he said, now after realization, what job should I take? I said, you take to interior decoration. And he got a shock. He said, I don't know what wood is, how am I to take interior decoration? I said, you can start feeling the vibrations. You just do it on the basis of vibrations. And he did it and he made a big money out of it because as I told you the other day, whatever is absolutely beautiful you think has nothing in it but has vibrations. It has a coefficient which gives you vibrations. Like Mona Lisa now. We like her Mona Lisa according to modern standards. She cannot be a beauty because she was a very plump lady, an elderly lady. But today also if you go there, you cannot see her painting. It's so crowded. Everybody is anxious to see Mona Lisa. And if you go and feel the vibrations, from distance you'll get vibrations from. Because the coefficients of her body, face and everything is made so well that you get the vibrations. Now people are uh, very anxious to create new ideas, new type of things and this, but these things do not sell. And even if they sell temporarily, they have no eternal values. So the people with this uh, chakra, enlightened, start creating things of very eternal values, of universal values. Anywhere you take such a thing, you take it to India, you take it to China, you take it to Japan or you take it to America, anywhere, any human being who sees that, sees the beauty of the spirit because it gives you joy in your spirit. So the pure art is produced through. That's the purity, or I would say the holy art is produced through. When you start producing that holy art, then you should believe that you have got an enlightenment on that chakra. This chakra has another capacity to transform your fat for the use of your brain. And it works very hard for that when you start thinking too much. And by that overthinking, what happens that you develop all the diseases of the organs which it has to look after. Like it has to look after the liver, it has to look after the pancreas, it has to look after the spleen, it has to look after the parts of the intestine and the uterus. So what happens that when you use this chakra only for the use of thinking and thinking and thinking, all these things go out of order. And one by one you start developing diseases like diabetes and then you start developing diseases of the uh, stomach and sometimes the spleen and all other diseases which are very dangerous, that the, as you can call the blood cancer and all those things out of this kind of mad thinking. Now, to tell you that you shouldn't think too much, you shouldn't bother too much, you should not be wobbly, you should take things easy, be light-hearted is not possible in the modern times because we are slave of the watch. But what happens? That when you get realization, your thinking process becomes regulated. You only think when you have to think. You just go on thinking, thinking like horns coming out. You don't think like that. You only think when you have to think. And whatever you think comes from you, inspiration as such. Now for time, you see, my watch is always out of order. I deliberately keep it out of order because the time is in your hand. 
Supposing these people will hurry me up too much. Mother, we have to go now, we will miss the plane, this thing, that thing. I said, all right. If you say, I'll go. I go to the <laughs> airport and there they find the plane is three hours late. Then they said, Mother, why didn't you tell us? I said, I was telling you, no need to hurry up. Why didn't you telephone and find out? If you had telephoned, we would not have been there earlier. So, you see, you start seeing that this time is best for this, this time is best for that. You don't have to become a slave of the watch. Like this, people become such slaves that they arrive at a point where there can be a, a, some sort of a wrong thing happening or maybe that you reach the place and you have to wait for four hours, you have to do all kinds of uh, arrangements to make yourself comfortable. Or sometimes it so happens that you quarrel with your wife, quarrel with your husband, quarrel with your children. Oh, we are getting late, we are getting late, we have to be on the time. All this madness comes to people because they have not got their realization. Once you get realization, you station down. You are very much at ease with yourself. You don't hurry others and you tr don't trouble others. Like small, small things, how much we trouble by our worries. You see, human beings will go on saying, I am worried. But what's the use of worrying? Now if I tell you don't worry, you cannot stop it. But once the hole is made here, which we call the Brahma Randra is open, then there's a hole out of which the worry comes out. And then you just cannot worry. Even if you want to worry, you won't worry. Because somehow or other, you go beyond that nonsense of worry. In any way, mentally, I cannot convince you that you don't worry. But once you get realization, you'll be amazed. You'll be just enjoying yourself. Even if you are late, you are not going to bother about or trouble others. And you will find that you will be always in time for things because there is a force. This all-pervading power of God looks after you. You start believing in it, how it works out. You won't believe how much it helps, how much it works out, how it can operate. It is beyond description. I mean, I'll tell you a story which you won't believe. Did I tell them yesterday about the boy who fainted? No. A story about myself and then a story about what I can tell you. It's in the newspaper, so you can believe it. I was giving a lecture in Bedford and uh, that was from 7 to 10. And about 8 o'clock, a boy fell down somewhere about, I don't know, 10, 15 miles from a bridge. Very deep down, he fell down from his motorbike. And they sent for an ambulance. They got frightened. They thought this boy must be dead, so fall down to this extent. So the ambulance came in, and when the ambulance came in, this boy just walked up, and he came up, and he sat in the ambulance. So they said, how are you? He said, I'm all right, nothing wrong with me. So he said, but nothing happened to you? He said, no, I broke lots of things. But a lady came in her white uh, clothes, in a white uh, Mercedes, that's my car, and she walked down up to me, and she cured me. And the, only she left the lower portion of my bone, and she said that you come for this to me. And the rest is I'm perfectly all right, see. They couldn't believe it, you see. And the police was there and everybody was there. And the next day he saw my photograph in the newspaper and he informed them. He informed the police, this is the lady who came and cured me. So they telephoned our people and asked them, did she pass this way that day? They said, she, that time she was just giving lecture before 600 people, she was not there. So they were quite amazed how it has happened, but it can happen. It's nothing new. I mean, it has happened many a times, but one of these that has appeared in the newspaper is like that. Now, how does this happen? God has got wonderful television also. Perfect. It's so systematic. It's so scientific. How it works, that for that, you have to just see and wonder. He has got telecommunication. He has got computers. He has got everything that you have created, but extremely efficient and methodical. You don't have to worry. It just works out. There are so many things that have happened. <coughs> like you have heard that Christ gave uh, bread, uh, five bread and the fishes to so many people. It's nothing new to now Sahaja Yogis. They have seen this many times happening in our groups and in our camps. But uh, another thing which is not believable but has happened to one Mr. Warren, Dr. Warren, who is here from Australia. When he came to India, uh, he got his realization and when he went back he said, I must now start uh, talking about Sahaja Yoga and giving realization to people. And when he went back, 
to Australia, uh, there was a petrol crisis. And there was no petrol in his car about to finish. So they thought, now what to do? We will not have any petrol. How to do mother's work? So they said, let's start. We'll just go wherever we want. We'll not look at the petrol. And they did this for 21 days, continuously. And when they went to the petrol pump after 21 days, because the petrol pumps had opened out, the petrol pump fellow said that there is hardly one liter uh, space there, what am I to fill it? And they were amazed. They did it 21 days, it can happen. You do not know when you say God is almighty, when we say that he can do whatever he wants to do, he does everything. When we say that, we are not aware that what he can do. We just think that at the most he can make flowers into fruits, at the most he can make our heart beat, at the most, he can make us from amoeba to a human being. But just think of it, how far he can go, and how capable he is, and how full of compassion he is for his own creation. <coughs> now, you have to enter into that area. First of all, unless and until you are there, you are really blessed by God, you cannot believe it, how it helps. Secondly, thirdly, the third center, is the center of your seeking. As he has told you, is the center of your seeking. Now the seeking gets satisfied in the sense that you feel you are no more to seek. Now you have to give. You are asking for the light, you have got the light and you have to give the light. But you do not develop the phonetic attitude that I am the right person and you are the wrong person and that kind of a violent nature, but you develop a very gentle and a kindly and affectionate nature towards that person. Because you have gone through that kind of an experience, so you know that this person is ignorant, gradually when he will see the light, he will understand. So you don't force your way onto him at all. On the contrary, you allow that person to slowly take to it and awaken his kundalini and see for himself, so that he should certify himself. You don't force him to say things. You do not organize him, you do not uh, make him a member, you do not take money from him, nothing. You leave him alone. If he wants to come, he can come. If he does not want to come, he need not come. In Sahaja Yoga, we have made it compulsory that all the centers we are running, no young boys should come who are below age without the permission of their parents, even to visit, leave alone living there. So that, that's how we allow only those people who are grown up, adults, to come with their own wishes. They are not to be forced. If they want to go today, we'll say, all right, go just now. There is no compulsion on anyone because one thing you must know that you cannot compel as far as your Self-realization is concerned. Because it is of no use. It has to come through your freedom, through your asking, otherwise we cannot work it out. Unless and until you ask for it, we cannot do it. It is an impossibility. So you must understand that I cannot force you to get Realization. It has to work out. If it works out, you are a lucky person. I cannot guarantee it. If it is works, works out, that means it's your own. And if it has not worked out, and if you want to work me out, or anybody to work it out, they'll work it out. But it cannot be guaranteed, it cannot be promised. So your seeking stops. And what happens, that you start looking at yourself, and seeing your own glory, and understanding your own powers. Get yourself cleaned out, and you want to give others that solace that you have got, that realization that you have got. So I always say that I'm the greatest capitalist, because if I have all the powers, I'm the greatest capitalist, and I'm the greatest communist, because I cannot live without distributing. I must distribute. When we talk of capitalism, what do you have? These stones? What do you have? What do you distribute? The stones. And what are you, a communist? What are you distributing? Only stones. So there is nothing to be proud of these worldly possessions. What you are to be proud of or to be conscious of is your spirit. Spirit is the only thing that can kindle another spirit. I have not seen any matter 
can kindle that joy in anyone. At the most, if you give some matter to somebody, at the most, that is the only advantage of having some material thing is that you can give away, that you can express your love through some material things. But otherwise, the matter has no value of any kind. But spirit has absolute value because it can kindle light into another's life. And there cannot be anything better than to be given to anyone else. No amount of money, no one amount of empires, nothing can give that which is the Spirit, because the Spirit is the ultimate. After that you don't seek anything. That's what is the Kundalini, is the true desire which wants to become the reality, which wants to become the divinity. To get divinity within you is the highest thing and that's what once you get, you don't want anything else. So the seeking starts improving. Around the seeking are the ten commandments, we can say, or the ten primordial masters. There are many others, but the primordial master, the ten, who came on this earth one after another to teach us how to balance ourselves. After realization, I have seen people automatically balance. I don't tell them anything about ten commandments. I don't say don't, I never say. I said you get your realization. Once they get realization, they just start behaving in such a manner that is extremely righteous, extremely balanced, extremely holy, such a person becomes immediately rid of all the horrible habits they have, all the enslavement of passion and lust and greed, everything drops out just like that. And like a beautiful lotus, they come out of that mire, that darkness into light. And then in the light they see it so clearly that this is not the thing that I can have, this is not the thing that I can wear, and immediately they give it up. That's how you become a new personality. This religion is born within you. Now we talk of religion, this religion, that religion, that religion, everybody is talking of different religions and dogmas and this and that and only fighting everywhere you go, they are fighting among each other, it's still going on, it's endless. They are all fighting morning till evening. Then I have seen also some people who try to unite religions and there also they have nothing but all the devils put together, all devils joined together to unite. There's nothing of reality in them. So the people are puzzled. What, are, what is happening to religion? These organized religions also can be very dangerous. They can put you into such norms that you can really get absolutely brainwashed. And you start believing that what you are doing is correct without understanding why are you doing it. Most of the things tell you this is a mystery, that is a mystery. Then why, what are you doing there? If it's a mystery, it is better you give up. But they'll just brand you that this is mystery, that is mystery, you have to accept. But what is the advantage of that kind of a life? Nobody wants to see. As I told you, that Christ has asked for one thing, thou shalt not have adulterous <coughs> eyes. And let us see which religious organization has granted that to people. It's only your spirit when it is awakened and reborn, you can have that innocence within you. As it is today, it's a getting late, but I have to tell you that the chakras, as it he explained, I am just giving you the powers of every chakra. And the power of the chakra of heart is tremendous. It gives you the fearlessness. When the child is about twelve years of age, in this sternum bone, the antibodies are created by this chakra. And they are sent all over the body to fight the disease or any kind of an attack on the personality. Now, these are actually looked after by the deity in that center. And this deity, when gets the message, she informs all the antibodies that you have to fight. And all of them will go at that point, join together to fight the enemy of life enemy of God. Like uh, now we are having, uh, P uh, now I'm here, and uh, Americans are to be realized and we have to do something about America. And knowing that how America is important, we, I'll tell you where America is in this body. Uh, people from Australia, from India, 
from France, from all over, have come down here. All the way they have come, just to give realization to Americans. All of them, I never forced anybody, I never asked anybody, they just came forward, Mother, we are going to go with you and we are going to do this great work of realization to people of America who are seekers. They all have come on their own, spending their own money, and they are doing this work with me. So you can imagine what a great attraction it must be, what a great attachment it must be for the seekers of America, that they have come all the way, they are all people on big jobs, some is a doctor, another is an architect, another is this, all of them sacrificing their money, everything, time, have come down here to be with me for these two months to work for America. From all over, we have some people who are actresses uh, in the uh, mm, English drama or some are directors and things like that. They all have come here. In your Boston, we have at least, I think, ten people from ten countries. So you can imagine how is the whole attention, the priority, this is the important thing, they must get realization. They do not get any money out of it, they do not get any reward out of it, only the satisfaction that so many have got realization. The more the merrier. When they see more people coming, getting realization, you must see their faces, they lit up. This kind of a personality people have not seen. I had one bishop who came to stay with me in my house in London, and when he saw Sir Yogi, he said, this is a rare caste and community, I've never seen such a... So I've been telling people to do little things in life, they cannot do it and look at these people. How beautiful they are, I can't believe, how can they be so nice? Because your spirit is beautiful, the spirit is glorious, and when you become that, automatically it starts manifesting its beauty. You don't have to tell yourself, you'll be amazed at yourself how you have become so beautiful and so good and so nice. So this quality of fearlessness comes to you because your antibodies are completely charged with the power of the Spirit. And you start understanding what sort of a disease is coming, what sort of a attack is coming, and your body knows how to fight it. You know how to fight it. And when you know that, you are not afraid of any disease whatsoever. Even if it is cancer, anything, people know how to fight it themselves and for others. Now the higher chakra is of Vishuddhi chakra. And this chakra is what America is. In the universe, this is the chakra, Vishuddhi chakra is what America represents. Because America has a responsibility. This center has the responsibility. When they raise the head, human beings, then the center developed the responsibility to be human beings. And the responsibility of spirituality lies on the shoulder of Americans. You had great people like Abraham Lincoln, very great people here professing about uh, freedom of your country, and big ideal things. But to my dismay, I find, where are those gone? Where are those people who will take the responsibility of spirituality? They are lost with fake gurus, they are lost with cults, they are lost with all kinds of things. And where are they? It's such a sad thing that the responsibility which was on the shoulder of Americans has been not properly tackled at all. But now the time is, Though we start slowly, let us take up the responsibility and see for ourselves what we can do for our countrymen, for our people, and on the whole, for the whole world. You can do a lot because that is your speciality, that is your job which has to be done. Now this chakra gives you the power to be the witness. First power you get, that you become the witness. Witness of everything, the whole thing becomes like a drama. Like you are in the water and then you suddenly come in a boat and you start seeing the play of all these waves. You are no more afraid, you just start seeing it as a drama, you become a witness. 
The second thing that happens to you with this, that you become collectively conscious. Your hands, if this chakra is good, start feeling the cool breeze, start feeling the chakras of yourself and chakras of other people. With your hands, you can cure people. With your hands, you can raise the Kundalini. With your hands, you can give realization. These hands become powerful things. Even the movement of these hands has a meaning. Everything has a meaning. Whatever it does, little fingers, they all have a meaning and because they get enlightened. Muhammad Sahib has said very clearly, at the time of resurrection, your hands will speak. Now, if you talk to any Muslims, they will say, we have never heard of Resurrection Day. While in the Qur'an, if you see, most of it is dealt with to Resurrection Day, and the Doomsday is very little. But people will talk about the Doomsday because they can frighten others with that and have their own cults and old things. But actually the Resurrection Day is the most important thing and for which Muhammad Sahib has clearly said the future he didn't say that, I'm the last, now nothing is going to happen. He said, at the time of resurrection, your hands will speak. And that's exactly what happens, that you start feeling others on your fingertips. You know through your fingertips what centers are catching in another person or in yourself also, and immediately you start improving it if you know how to do it. And that's what you have to learn, is that divine technique, the true knowledge of how to handle this power of divine love that is flowing through you. So this center is very important, I think, for Americans. It has one side by which people are aggressive. When they talk, they, they bump shots, they are ego-oriented, they try to suppress others by their speeches and try to dominate others when they talk. These are the right-sided people. The other side are the left-sided people when they feel guilty, they think they have done this wrong and that wrong, they should not have done this wrong. Actually, I've seen that in America most of the people have problems here, most surprising. They're all the time shaking their neck like this, all the time. In my program also I've seen, they have always a problem here. The thing is that they have a greater responsibility to keep this center the best by keeping the responsibility of spirituality quite the highest priority. They should have the highest priority. But what you find, that all the people are coming from all over the world to help the Americans. A day should come when the Americans should go all over the world to give realization. And I'm sure that day will come one day when you will grow up to that sense of responsibility when this center will really stand up as a spiritual personality. Now the higher center is of Agya Chakra, which uh, he has told you about, is the center when you get realization and when the Kundalini rises above that, you become thoughtlessly aware. Now at this time you get the power, first of all, of curing people. If you touch somebody, he's cured. If you say something, that happens. If you go in the house, something good comes in that house, auspiciousness starts working through you when the center is open. But one should not leave at that center, because if you start moving on to the left or to the right, you get into problems. If the center starts moving on to the right, then you start seeing visions, which is a very wrong thing. You go into the realm of supraconscious or into the collective supraconscious, by you can become a very ego-oriented person. You can be a very violent, hot-tempered, quarrelsome person. Actually, Hitler used this. Hitler used uh, this method from the lamas he learnt, and he put people onto the right side of the supraconscious into collective supraconscious and put the spirits, dead spirits, who were of the people who were extremely ambitious and cruel. That's how this cruelty came into the Germans, and they forgot what they were. They forgot they were human beings. The way they killed, the way they behaved, is impossible for any human being to do that. But he managed this, and he's written down that he got all this from lamas from Tibet. From there he got the knowledge how to put people onto the collective supraconscious. Now the people who can go to the left side also start uh, curing people, they start... Uh, in such a company you might just get stunned. If you face such a person, you might just get stunned. Or you might uh, get uh, a kind of a... 
uh, complete attraction for such a person. You might get completely under the domination of such a person. You might surrender completely to such a person and you will not know what you are doing till that person has completely destroyed you. This type of people have these horrible powers because they enter into the collective subconscious and when they enter into the collective subconscious, they gather those spirits which they use. But the people who, as it is, move to the left side, who cry, weep, emotional, feel uh, guilty all the time, miserable people, they jump onto the left side. Now all the diseases, practically most of them, like AIDS, like cancer, like malitis, all these diseases come from the left side entry and is accepted by the doctors because I have seen a very good film made by the doctors who are researching on cancer that when the body is vulnerable to these diseases, means when you are over exerting yourself, when there is too much of sympathetic activity in a person and when a person is absolutely fagged out with it, at that time they say that these diseases are triggering to you, that somebody triggers it. And what is this they call is the protein 52 and protein 58 and all these names they give because doctors don't know that they are dead spirits. And these are the things when they enter into you, then they trigger it. But they say something very right and that is that these things come from the area built in you since your creation, means your collective support. And that I have been saying for so many years, now recently I saw this film. So they are coming to the same point but after such a long time that it is triggered by them. So those people who go too much to the left get this trouble. Those who go to the, too much to the right get heart trouble, heart attacks. But not the slow attack because heart has double type of attacks. It can be a slow heart or it can be a fast heart. The, the people who go on the right side have everything fast. Liver is moving fast, everything moving fast is such a speedy temperament. Because they are so speedy, in the morning they'll get up, now I have to go to the office and they'll be taking the breakfast in one hand, putting one foot in the uh, trousers and another hand into the coat, running to the car and <laughs> there's a big another jam coming up and then swearing at everything and it's a mess throughout and the whole body gets messed up. And when the whole body gets messed up, then what happens that your speedometer, which is the spleen, also goes out of order and you develop a funny type of temperament. If you say them that we have to go now to the airport, you see them absolutely gone, if they are wobbly, the whole machine goes off, you don't know why. I, if you ask them, oh, I have to go to the airport, so what? Even the name of airport can put people like that. So they become absolutely uneasy people. And this kind of thing when happens, you see, you are in for trouble. You are very much in for trouble. And this is to be balanced and put right through your Kundalini awakening. <coughs> Now this center, as you know, is the most important center because this is the gate to the kingdom of God and is governed by our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the embodiment of innocence. Here he does not incarnate, there he incarnates on this earth. Now this crucifixion was fixed and he was to be crucified to show that he is eternal life which does not die. He is Chaitanya, he is made of these vibrations. So he could walk on the water also and he could pass through that tight closeness of these two <coughs> balloon-like structures, ego and superego, and could settle there to establish that center for us, which is called as the Agya Chakra, which controls your ego and superego both. But more surprising, the people who are, say, Catholics, are the people who use their super ego. They get conditioned very much, this should not be done, confessions, weeping, crying, unhappy, we have to be miserable. Why? Christ has been crucified for you. He has suffered for you. Why? If you have accepted Christ, you should be joyous, only to be awakened Christ so that you get your realization. That's all. What is there to cry? If they are, say, Protestants and all that, I took my birth in Protestant religion and many Hindus and Muslims ask me, Mother, why did you take your birth in Protestant religion? So I said they are very sophisticated 
fanatics because they rationalize everything. They rationalize God, they rationalize every dogma, everything. It's such a thinking going on there. So you, it is very difficult to push them back that God is not thinking. God is beyond thought. God is beyond your mind. Mind is limited. You have to go beyond that. And that's why Christ crossed that limit by his resurrection. So his message is his resurrection and his resurrection has given us a special quality that once he's awakened within us, the both these ego and super ego are sucked in by him. That means he died for our sins. So that he sucks our sins, our karmas, everything sucked in and this opens up. Once this opens up, the Kundalini comes out. And this is what he has done such a great work that he has died for our sin and when he is awakened, both these institutions are sucked in and you become egoless, super egoless. You become deconditioned automatically. Now this great incarnation was called as Mahavishnu and was, is described in the ancient books about 14,000 years by, by Markandeya. But people could not relate it to that because when Christians went from here, they went in a different mood. It was a political stunt. You see, they carried a gun in one hand and a Bible in another hand. Such people could not communicate with other people who had everything with them. And they never read those books to them. It was all prohibited. Bible is too small a book to contain a character like Christ. He was too great a man. And we should have gone all out to see what he's described in other scriptures, how he's talked about. Let us find out. We should have been open-minded about it. Instead of that, people just laughed and mocked at all these old books the scriptures and they thought they are the wisest. This is the worst part, is that the ego thinks they are the highest, they are the best. They can do what they like and that is how they lived. But thank God now people are realizing that we have missed the point. We have definitely missed the point. So we have to see what he was before he came on this earth, in the heaven how he was created, how he was Alpha and Omega, what was his own nature, for what purpose he came and why he died, why he was resurrected, why this drama was to be carried out. For this, only three and a half years of Christ cannot explain and people cannot tell us why all these things happened. We have to keep a very open mind about Christ and we have to see with our own eyes how it works out. In Kundalini awakening, you'll be surprised when the Kundalini stops here and this chakra is closed, then you have to say, the Lord's Prayer, everywhere. Whether you are a Jew, you are a Muslim, you are a Hindu or a Christian, from whatever community you become a yogi, you become a realized soul, you have to say the Lord's Prayer because the Kundalini won't rise and that is the, one of the greatest proof that Christ resides here. If you do not say the Lord's Prayer, it doesn't work out. So Lord's Prayer is a mantra, is a chanting but it's to be said by a person who is a realized soul, who is authorized for you. Otherwise it's called as anadhikar cheshta, means the person who has no right is trying to do something, is doing a wrong thing. So those who are realized soul, when they say this mantra, then the, cent the center is opened up, Christ is awakened and you are allowed to see, allow your kundalini to pass through it and enter into the realm of this limbic area where is 1,000 petaled lotus remains. Now this petal then opens up because of the pressure being reduced of the ego and superego and they are in different beautiful colored flames. The outside starts with a, just like uh, from Vipjor, if you take it from uh, with your in the same way they start, but very slowly moving. And the end ones are like crystal, crystal, absolutely like crystal, they're shining. And when the Kundalini comes out of it, you see the whole thing opened out, the whole chakra opens out. This is a very important center which has to be opened out because here all the seven centers are there. For example, we have got here at the back, if you start here from here, if you start, is the Muladhara, and then around it is the Swadhisthana, and here is the Nabhi, and then it is the heart. See now, this is the hole which has to open, and this is the heart. Means if, if 
If there is a dirty heart, if there's a closed heart, if it's a tired heart, if there's a, a sick heart, then this doesn't work. So the, in the heart resides the spirit. And that's why this is the seat of the spirit, but it resides in the heart. So when this opens out, this, this flower-like lotus opens out, then the Kundalini rises in her own glory and you get your realization as you got it. Now, as I told you, it is the beginning. In the Bible it is said, I will appear before you like tongues of flames. And you can see it, I see it every day, the beautiful tongues of flames. But you can't see it because you are in it. You, whatever you see, you are not. So you have to first become. Once you become and you grow into that, then you can also start seeing. But just now you have to become. Supposing you see the light, means you are not the light. If you see anything, you are not that. So the question is of becoming, of actualizing and growing into it and knowing about everything that you do. Everything should be knowledgeable and should be understood, should be logical. I hope it works out in this place. I have told you all about chakras. Tomorrow, what to do about after self-realization, I'll tell you. And we'll have another session here in this hall. Luckily, we have got it and we have decided to have one more program tomorrow. I hope it will be nice tomorrow and it won't rain so much. So call all your friends. I'll tell you what is to be done after realization, what is the situation. So may God bless you. Thank you. Friday night, Sri Mataji. Friday. Friday. I'm sorry, I don't know what is the tell me. Tell me. Let him tell, I don't know. Let him tell. Just a small correction. The program that was not announced, which Sri Mataji just referred to, is for Friday night. Friday night in this hall, not tomorrow night. So she's going to make it a session in which she discusses the nature of the spirit and goes on to perhaps make it a little more formal, whereby we can develop and deepen more the experience of self-realization. Today I don't think we should have questions. You can write it down and I'll answer them on Friday, all right? Because there's little time. Yesterday we spent about 45 minutes answering questions. All right? If you don't mind. Same time, 7.30. So please don't ask questions today because yesterday, you know, for 45 minutes we had question and answer. Today let us have the realization. We have spent a lot of time and on Friday we'll work it out. That will be like what you call the workshop. <laughs> they call, the name is workshop, all right. So we'll have workshop on Friday. If you come here, I'll tell you all about it. We'll meet and we'll talk and there will be informal meeting together and you can ask me questions also as much as you like. And also if you have any questions, now you can leave them written down with uh, Mr. Uh, Steve or anyone you feel like and then I will be able to answer them when I come on Friday. Everyone slip their shoes off and they will take the experience of self-realization. I think you better keep it up, I'll stand up. Because without that, it yes, didn't work out. Shall I take it out? Yes. I'll have to hold it in the hand. Like yesterday, what we did, we we'll do it again today. And it will work out, I'm sure. Like yesterday, we have to put our hands on our lap, just like this. In a very comfortable way. First of all, we must sit comfortably. Uh, there should be no discomfort. And that will distract. So just sit very comfortably. And everyone should do it. There's nothing. 
special or anything, but you must try to do it and achieve it because it's not proper not to do it. When there's a chance, you must do it and it won't be good for others also if you don't want to do it. It's nothing, nothing uh, too much for you to do, it's very simple. So put your left hand towards me like this and the right hand you have to use because left hand is the power of desire and the right hand is the power of action. And uh, as I told you yesterday, that in a village of 6,000 people, I need not uh, do anything like that. Just when I stand up, they get realization. Because they are very simple people in a village. But here people are quite complicated. They have problems, self-created, uh, uh, society generated, the atmosphere generated, all sorts of things are there. Doesn't matter. So we have to a little bit nourish our different centers, which is a very easy thing to do. And I, I, as I told you, try to follow. Now, you have to uh, close your eyes and not to open your eyes because of the Agya Chakra. That's very important. Because if your eyes are open, I find it difficult uh, to raise your Kundalini. You have to keep your eyes completely closed. It will help your eyesight also. So keep your eyes completely closed. You don't have to open till you are told to open your eyes. So you don't have to worry at all. If there is any tight in your body somewhere, just loosen it a little bit. It will be a good idea so that you don't feel uncomfortable. There's nothing dangerous happens, never has happened. Uh, at the most you may feel little hot in the hand, at the most, doesn't matter. So now please close your eyes, just close your eyes. Put your both the hands on your lap towards me. Straight your fingers, stretching towards me. Just put your hands on your lap, stretch. Now put the right hand, left hand has to be fixed as it is, all the time. Now the left hand is to be Stretch towards me, stretch towards me, not towards your own hands, but towards me, straight. Now the right hand has to be lifted and put on your heart. Just put it on the left side, on your heart. At this point, with all sincerity, you have to say or ask a question three times, Mother, am I the spirit? With full confidence. First of all, you should not feel guilty at all. Forget the past. Forget the past. Please forget the past. Just now we are talking about the present. So just say, Mother, am I in spirit? Three times. With full confidence, or with now put this right hand on your stomach, on the left hand side, the center of Swadhisthana on the left hand side, Navi Chakra, on the Navi Chakra, on the left hand side. This is the center of the primordial master within you. And as you are the spirit, you have to say with full confidence, Mother, I am my own master. I am my own guru. You have to assert. So that if you have been wrong gurus, fake gurus, all kinds of cults, it will all disappear. Please say ten times. Mother, am I my own guide? Am I my own guru? Am I my own master? Don't feel guilty. Please don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Still you are feeling guilty is very wrong. Now, put this right hand down below on the stomach. Down below on the stomach is the Swadhisthana on the left hand side. At this point, you have to say, 
Mother may be the master of the divine art or divinity. Mother, I want to be the master of divinity. This is the center of the mastery of divinity. Please say this six times. Raise this hand again onto the heart. Now assert here. Twelve times you have to say without feeling it. With full confidence. You have to say, Mother, I am the Spirit. I'm sorry. Now please put this right hand on the neck. Please put your neck straight. Don't push it back too much. On the neck, on the left hand side, near the shoulder, just put it there and this time. At this point, you have to say, Mother, I am not weak. Please say, Mother, I am not weak. Sixteen times, you have to say, Mother, I am not weak. Now raise this hand higher onto your forehead across, on your forehead across. At this point, you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Now without feeling guilty, put your right hand at the back of your head, back of your head and try to press it up. Back of your head, just above, yeah, back of your head. Now try to put it, pull the head uh, and push the head backwards and pull with your hand. At this point, 
you have to say without feeling guilty. Hundred times I say without feeling guilty. You have to say, O oh Lord, please forgive me if I have done anything wrong. Again you feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Please don't feel guilty. Now raise your hand on top of your head. Now press it hard in the center of it with your palm and move it seven times but you must know that I cannot cross your freedom or I cannot compel you or I cannot do anything about it till you ask for it. So you have to say, Mother, I want my realization Please give me realization and that will work out. Just press it hard and move it clockwise and just say, Mother, I want my realization. Please give me realization. Please give me my realization. Just press it hard. Little further it is, it's not absolutely at the back, little forward where you have a soft bone in your child. Just press it hard. Say it seven times. down the hand, right hand, put it on your lap. Now with the left hand, you just see if there is a cool breeze coming in on your head. It's good, tremendous. Very cool. Just try to feel it. Little six inches above the head. right hand on your head and see. Now see if it is coming in your hands also. If you are feeling any cool breeze in your hands. If you are feeling the cool breeze out of your head, please try to open your eyes very slowly. You have to certify yourself. All right, open your eyes. 
Slowly open, all of you open your own. Slowly open your eyes, all of you. <clears throat> now I'll tell you how to raise your own kundalini and see how it makes a difference. This left hand is to be put in front of you while you are sitting, just like this. And with the right hand, you have to move it uh, clockwise, upward, forward, downward, backward, like that. And start moving now. Let's do it. And the left hand goes up straight. Just watch me. Now leave your shoulders free, push back your head and give it a twist. Now, give it a knot. <coughs> Second time. <coughs> you have to do it three times. Oh, better. Yes, it's good. Strong. Now push back your head and give it a second knot. Let's see the third one. Now here you have to give three knots. One, two, three. Tremendous. Now see in your hands. Better? Now push your hands up. Now ask a question, is this the breeze of the Holy Ghost in your heart? Hmm, now you can feel it in the hand also. Now see if you are feeling in your head and in the hands. Mm. You can see each other's head out, possibly. You can see each other's head. The Sahaja Yogis can go and so see. Okay. One should not talk much. Quietly see. Is Samot Sabak Bodhi? Got it? Good. Here we go. In light. Hmm. It's very strong tonight. Hmm? It's very strong. Very strong. Yeah. You found it. <laughs> you got it? Yes. Did it very seriously, mm -hmm. little boy. Just tell them anybody not feeling it to put their hands up. Anyone not feeling it, just raise your hands and somebody will come to you. Just raise your hands. Raise very strong, very deep. Mm. Today you are not feeling? Just see her, Steve, she's not feeling. Better. Mm, good. Don't think now. Don't think. You are beyond thinking. Just don't think. Watch me without thinking. Mm, better. Yes, straight away. Agya clears. <laughs> Working out. Left is a little bit. Left is a little bit. 
left. Better. Hamsa. Hmm. Better. Yes. Left is straight. Better now. Lifting. Left now. The left side is getting stronger. All right. Put her left to the right. She has liver. Again. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Whatever mistakes you have done or anything, just don't feel guilty, that's all. Everything is forgiven. You just forgive yourself, that is important. Is better and Doug is better. No, burnt myself or what move you <laughs> Sastra is very nice. Sastra is better. Because I talk to yes. myself. I teach them how to do Pandan. <laughs> yes. One more thing we must know how to give ourselves a protection to our aura. How to give protection to our aura is very important. Before you leave the hall, when you go out of your house and when you sleep, put your left hand like this and then right hand, you have to take it like that on your head, on your aura. Put it like that and then push it back is one. is two, is three, four, is five, six, seven. Now raise your Kundalini and tighten. This is how you should do it before sleeping, before getting out of your house. Now, if you are going to see somebody and you don't know how the person will act, just imaginary write his name here and just do like this, one, two and three. Your work is done, job is done. This is the power of love. We have never used the power of love. It's so tremendous you don't know. It will start working out. Today at the tele television when I went, you'll see that on Friday, I think, the gentleman who was televising me got realized. It has happened also in Vancouver, <laughs> in Toronto. So it happens to people who are just taking the television, also they got it. And that's how people are going to be confirmed about it. So may God bless you all. Tomorrow when you'll be coming, I'll tell you what is to be done after realization, how you must respect yourself, your realization, and how you must work it out. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Please bring your questions if you have any. Tonight at 7 p.m. Friday at 7 p.m. She wants to come and see me, she can come and see me day after tomorrow morning because Friday morning, because I have to go tomorrow to the morning. So when? Rajesh? Hmm. Rajesh? No, you got it now. Or you got it. He's got tremendous now, vibration. Is no good, right? Just throw it
Nancy? So how is your father? Nancy. Oh, he's got his reputation. And did they leave? Yeah. How was your sister? She got it. Oh. She was cynical before she walked in the door. I don't know. 
not realized. We have many Jews, we have many Jews who are realized, they know because you know, this is not rising. This is stopping here. That's why not you are the only one who has not got realization, everybody is going to fool it. Because it's talking, you don't believe in Christ. You have to believe that he was not going to there are so many Jews who believe in it, so many Muslims believe in it, so many Hindus believe in Abraham and in, in Moses. You just believe because you are born in that world. But they believe it because they are being born. That's a difference. Alright? So you have just a close mind about it. Just have to see. See, now there are people who are Hindus. They now believe in But without you, Jews did not believe it was wrong thing, they did very much because they did not believe it, they believed it, they were not to believe that they were saying. And when they believe they have to suffer, yes, they do believe it. Ah, they have to lament, they have to suffer. They have to they do not want to say You see, they, they believe that they must go and lament that they are more and should suffer. But have you seen they go to the wall and lament and cry and weep? That's it. They do it there.
There are many like that. They can be Muslims, they can be Hindus, they can be Christians. They are so many. They are called as fanatics. Oh. 